And with that, I welcome you to this week's video. We have to make a lot of things in this video, so let's get into it. Some things have just arrived directly from China. So let's open them up. The first things I have ordered that uh, just arrived are um, some end mills. There are tungsten carbide, two flute, six millimeters end mills. I have ordered them to to use on my CNC mill. So I have a, a little bit bigger um, end mill to use instead of the three millimeter one. And the second thing is a sand do four jaw chuck, uh, a tiny one for this project. So um, I needed to um, make the holder for the different tabs and dies. And I plan on uh, using this four jaw chuck to, to hold them. I start in this video by making the hand piece for this holder. And for that I have to um, first mark the length of the part. This drawing is in a 1 to 2 size. So I have to make it uh, 120 millimeters. I just mark a bit more than that because uh, I'm not good at cutting things off with a hacksaw. So I need some room left so I can um, turn, it, turn the, the faces nice and uh, square. Well, the first operation that I have to do is um, turn the faces down so they are nice and square to the to the diameter, and they're also just um, cleaned up so that I can then uh, turn them to to the required length. And as you can see, the surface turned out um, very good, at least for a steel insert cutting aluminum. Now I just flipped around the, the part and I'm doing the other side and measuring the length and then uh, taking final pass. I made it like uh, a millimeter longer than it needs to be, so I still had would have some material left for the knurling to start that I could then turn off but uh, I didn't do that because I just made a bigger chamfer there on the back side where I started with the knurling so the parts now a millimeter longer it doesn't matter the drilling with the 10 millimeter um, spiral drill worked uh, really good but it wasn't uh, long enough to get uh, through the entire part. So after drilling until I almost touched with the chuck, uh, it was like half a millimeter left, I switched to the big drill, a 15 millimeter um, drill. That was long enough to do this. And this one uh, cut really nicely, make, made some big chips that went everywhere and clogged up uh, the entire um, chip tray but I uh, was able to remove a lot of material with this drill. I always went uh, into the part and then out again so the chips would fall out. This works uh, really good for uh, for chips like this. And then I used uh, a 16 mm reamer. So I took a uh, half a millimeter of material off with a reamer per side or um, in the diameter. That's uh, quite a bit for a reamer, but it's just aluminum and it, it worked. Here I checked the fit with the 
with the taper part, the guide rod that, made, that I made in the last video and it was uh, reasonably good so then I made the entire diameter I had to back out and back in uh, multiple times because I don't have uh, enough travel on the quill of the tailstock so this hole will probably not be <laughs> very accurate but uh, it will be accurate enough the part got uh, quite hot so after it cooled down it was even a better fit with the with the guide from from the last video and then I tried out my knurling tool, it's one that just uh, presses into the surface. You have to angle it a bit to the... Um, like... Uh, you can't have that the 90 degree angle in the tool post, you have to have, to have it at like 89 degrees. So that you have uh, like a rake angle I think it is. Um, when you go from the right to the left side and not just uh, in radially if you move you have to have this uh, this angle and then I uh, went once and then I re-engaged it by um, just aligning them and went again and it didn't look half bad and if I would sand it down with a bit of uh, sandpaper it would have um, also looked uh, as good as the end product will. Here I'm turning down the out diameter of the, the hand piece because for the knurling tool the circumference of the part has to line up with the pitch or, um, of the of the knurling tool or it will cut like multiple, it will go not in the same uh, ridge, it will go in a, a little bit offset from that, so this diameter has to be quite accurate, I didn't find how accurate it has to be, but I made it to like um, 100 or 200 of a millimeter to the size, and then uh, I just hoped it would work, and after that I could start with the knurling, this uh, is still, I have uh, still um, something that is uh, new to me, I have not done this a lot. I basically uh, bought this tool and made like one part with it and now I made this one. I really learned uh, a lot here, especially that it's very important to keep out the chips, as you will hear right now. And as you just heard, it makes a huge difference. This because the chips that uh, don't get um, blown away get uh, in between and again and again and then they uh, get embedded in the surface. If you want to see the part 1 and 2 of, these, uh, of this series of me making this uh, guide, then you should uh, go and watch part 1 and 2 on my channel. I think they're also really informative videos. The first one is... Uh, where I explain uh, how I designed everything and why I designed it uh, the way it is. And then the second part I made um, the taper part, so the part that goes in the tailstock and is um, a guide for everything else. If you're interested in these videos, you can press the button on the top right of your video right now. And if you don't want to miss the next part, or want to support me, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. And the part I'm making now is the part that will uh, connect the forgeard chuck and the uh, guide, the handpiece. For that I need to uh, cut an M14 by 1mm thread. This is a non-common thread type, so I will have to single point thread it on the lathe. And I'm now cutting the relief for uh, the thread and uh, the major diameter of the thread is um, the 14 millimeters I have already turned this roughly I will um, 
dialed it in with some fine sandpaper. As well as the bigger diameter, this will be a, a press fit with the handpiece. I was about uh, one or two hundredths of a millimeter too big on the thread diameter, but that still works. Now I had to change change gears on my lathe. This is always a huge hassle and your hands will be dirty for three days. But if you have to do a special thread, that's the only option. Here I ground the turning, single point turning tool for the thread. I don't have any because I don't do this often. But uh, so I roughly ground a 60 degree cutting tool. And here I'm checking if I um, change the gears right by taking a very light scratch pass of about uh, two, three hundredths of a millimeter. That's about one thou in inch. I had to put some paint on top of the surface so I could uh, see the, the scratches better for uh, measuring because I wasn't able to um, see it. On this lathe I have to um, let the lead screw stay engaged through the entire thread cutting process because I don't have one of these like uh, weird dials that you can use to uh, disengage them and then engage them in the same position again. Um, maybe this will be a future project, I don't know how they work, but maybe I will be able to do something. This would be a really useful uh, upgrade. And uh, after measuring the distance, I um, concluded that it was right, so it was a millimeter of uh, pitch. That's what I needed. And then I can uh, start actually cutting the thread. This is not the first thread I have uh, cut on a lathe with a single point cutting tool. But um, on the other lathes that I cut it there, you could uh, disengage and you had a break and they were just a lot bigger. I've never cut the thread on, on my lathe at home. So I was interested in um, how it would turn out. While cutting threads like this, um, it's really important that you um, turn off the spindle um, before you get out of the thread entirely, because um, otherwise you will probably uh, run into the back shoulder. If um, if you do it too late, and that can uh, be very bad because your tool will probably just ju just break. So you have to be careful while doing this and. You have to also go uh, very slow and uh, in small increments to see if if it, if it fits with the with the other part. And uh, that's what I tried here. And then I went and did again a pass of about five thousand five hundredths of a millimeter. And um, after that, it was a really nice, almost a nice fit. I. Um, Again went and did another five hundredths of a millimeter. Past this poked me on the DRO exactly at 13 millimeters. Um, I started at 14 so that would uh, check out. And after that it was a really nice fit with uh, almost or not a lot of play. You could obviously make uh, a nicer thread if you had uh, the right uh, cutting tool. And not just something that you... Um, made in five minutes and now uh, we can cut it off and I've also figured out in the last video the cutoff tool was uh, didn't work for me and I, I figured out here because uh, I had um, I didn't change the, the belt so I ran this at 120 rpm and uh, then it worked really just fine to cut off the, the part so I was just running it uh, way too fast last week and before that in general. And with that we are done for this week's video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, you should really uh, like this video. I would really appreciate it. And uh, we will hopefully finish this project next week. And with that, thank you for watching and until next week.